All right, hey guys. Um, thanks for all the comments. Um, we went for a fly last video in the Jabiru down the coast, so I had a lot of feedback on that. Today, I just wanted to walk around the aircraft. A lot of people asked a lot of questions, so I thought I'd do a video um, and just cover off on that. And for all those internet people out there, don't take it too seriously. I don't fly aerobatics as much as I'd love to do a quarter roll to knife edge, one and a half snap back to the opposite knife edge. We'll keep that for the model aeroplanes. I don't fly aerobatics in the Jabiru. If you want to be part of the Jabiru aerobatic team, members are growing fast. There's uh, one member at the moment. Um, don't forget to subscribe, like the video, and enjoy your flying. Thanks for watching. All right, first question I got was about my, oh, there's my Aussie flag to start with. It's a bit of a story, this Aussie flag here, very sentimental to me, it's only a cheap flag, but um, that did nine months with me in the desert, so that's why I've got my Aussie flag hanging up there. The, um, the wing bags, if you like, or the socks, um, I can't actually say that I, I'll pull the one off over here, when I bought the aircraft, I bought the aircraft second hand, um, it's a 2009 Jabiru 160, the Gen 4 in it. Um, yeah, these wing bags are like, they're like a Duna cover looking thing, just slide on and off. Um, the best way, so the previous owner actually made these, but I've just had to maintain them over the time. Just one of those big darning needles, I think it's called, and just whack some heavy fishing line, 50 pound fishing line or string or whatever you got. Um, it is interesting though, you see a lot of people that have, uh, well, there's an RV next to me, they haven't got any wingtip covers, but um, you know, it sounds simple, but pull your aircraft out, then take the covers off. I see a lot of people take the covers off and drag the aircraft out. Now, the only time you're gonna, it's going to hit something when it's moving, so um, you could potentially hit the door. So simple thing, leave the covers on move the aircraft. In my instance here, the, um, the wing just goes over the top of the RV here and straight out the door. So that's the wing covers. I've also got a prop cover, intake covers and the usual bungs. All right, next main question I had was how do you get audio in your GoPro? So I've got the Bose headset, um, just the standard Bose A20 I think it is. Um, then you put a so these are the two jacks that would normally plug into the aircraft, small and large. Then you run this wire lead. So this is like a GoPro lead, which goes into the uh, the large, goes into the large connector, um, and then that. So then those two would go into the aircraft. So you basically just wire lead it off. Then this long lead just plugs into your GoPro to give you audio. You do need a headset, I believe. I believe, like if you plugged it into the passenger side, you need a headset connected to actually um, record the audio. These cords are available, uh, eBay, Amazon, those sort of things. Just search like GoPro headset, wire lead, something like that. About 60 bucks, I think it is. Um, there's another little lead coming off there with some sort of warning. I haven't actually read yet. Applying ship power to this cable may cause damage to your aircraft and or camera. There you go. Audio for the GoPro. This is another thing at my feet. I've got the battery trickle charger. Just goes into the, um, there's an Anderson plug on the side there. So it keeps the battery topped up. Never have an issue starting this. It's about two degrees, things like that down here in Gippsland. Um, if you have trouble starting, just put a new battery in. See people tipping hot water on their engines and things like that, hair dryers, trying to get them warm. That's telling you that the battery's no good, so every couple of years, PC625 in this one, spins it over, this thing will fire in the first 10 blades, no worries at all, on the coldest of mornings. Um, so the other question I had was how do I mount my iPad? So I made up this bracket, um, it's just plywood, um, sort of made it look a bit aviation orientated. Um, I kept, I got some photos there under construction I'll throw up, um, kept the pegs separate until such time as it came to mount it on the dashboard. Uh, I drilled some holes in the back, one makes it look sort of aircraft, you know, saved myself a good three grams there I reckon in weight, but just to aid in cooling, 
um, because it, it sits here in the windscreen, my dirty windscreen. Um, so I wanted to, you know, just help it cool down a bit. Also the charge lead fits up through the bottom. So this is just out of plywood. Um, I packed it whatever, whatever thickness is required, something like 19 or 20 mil. Um, it's all glued together and then I just went through and put some, uh, some 3 mil bolts by the look of it. 3 mil nuts and bolts, just to make it look a bit more aviation oriented. Um, when that's in the aircraft, one consideration is the positioning of it. Uh, you don't want to hit the windscreen when you slide the iPad in and out. So at the top, the iPad can potentially hit the windscreen. Also on my iPad, I just cut apart one of those cheap uh, windscreen car windscreen covers. So when that's installed, that'll slide down, pick up the charge point, and I just have that up on the dash to keep that direct heat off the back of the iPad so it doesn't overheat. They're nice and simple, and I'll show you how I install that. Okay, so a consideration with the iPad mount in the aircraft now, um, when I made this up, I could sacrifice half the um, airspeed indicator, if you like. There's no way I'm going to get to 140 knots, even 120 is out of the question. So I just position a bit of, because this has got Velcro, Velcro feet, which will make it stick anywhere. So a bit of paper on the dash, position that, position that to where you want it. Take the paper out and it's velcroed in place. You can see it just covers up the top quarter if you like of the um, airspeed indicator and I've still got still got my warning lights and we're good to go. The um, charge lead just goes to a cigarette lighter, a little bit of velcro on the top um, and I'll put the iPad in and show you how that works. So with the iPad just got to watch the windscreen at the top That'll drop in, and obviously the charge lead will uh, plug in, and you get your iPad. It's up there, it's out of the way. With the lead, just run that over the top, tight, neaten it up, so when you're flying with the throttle, um, the lead's well up out of the way. So I find that really good. Um, it's a little bit uh, vertical, but because of where the windscreen is, to get it out, um, could do with laying back a bit. It also keeps the sun off it. And then with that, um, that little bit of foil at the back there, you do get a little bit of, I'm not sure if you can see it in the video, the, the um, uh, return in the windscreen, like a reflection in the windscreen. But that's how I went about mounting my iPad. Plywood, Velcro, all secure, not on your knee, not flopping around, out of the way. Well, our next question was GoPros. So I've got this one in the cockpit. Um, now, you have to look up on GoPros. Definitely don't mount them on the outside of your aircraft. You have to look up on the regs. Australia has very specific regulations on external mounting of GoPros, and I believe it's like a design deviation and you need approval. So don't just go taping these on your wing struts or anything like that. Inside the aircraft, once again, check the regs. Um, I believe they need to be secure. So there's, I'm not 100% sure on this one, so let's just say I don't use this one, but it's got Velcro on the bottom, and that'll just sit on the dash basically anywhere, and that locks in pretty quick. Like I said in other videos, I don't like mucking around with the cameras too much when you're flying. You know, to get that off, you can see that's actually grabbed fairly hard. And to do that while you're flying, you end up rolling the aircraft, um, lose your heading and that sort of thing. Um, that's a good one if you just were to see something, if you were going to use it in your aircraft. Um, but once again, have to check on the regs as to whether that's secure. The other one up the back here, behind me. The other one goes up the back, so looking towards the rear of the aircraft where my headset hangs up on the jab. Flap torque tube, and I've got a solid clip where this, um, this GoPro, this GoPro here will mount you see the clip on the end, it just clips up into there. Um, you'll notice the GoPro is upside down, so for those who aren't aware, you just tell the GoPro that it's filming upside down and it does all the hard work for you. So that's where that rear one sits up there out of the way. There's plenty of clearance from the flap torque tube, that's where that one locks in. Okay, one other bit that grabbed everyone's attention was my sexy uh, door 
trim, if you like. Looks really cool. Um, what I did there was just traced around the high point of the door. I just used a bit of cardboard or something. Um, this is just Velcroed on. So, as you can see, I won't take it right off. But that's 3mm uh, plywood. Once again, just at Bunnings or the hardware store. I think that's like uh, you know, 20 by 10 or 19 by 8 or something, one of those, those strips of plywood, just to give you some a uh, bit of a standoff. Um, Velcro on the edge. Don't, with a sticky, I actually use 5 minute arrow diet on the Velcro here because I know it's going to cop a bit of a flogging. The sticky stuff works okay, but a bit of arrow diet helps it as well. Um, yeah, and stuck that on. As far as, uh, so that sticks on really well. It's relatively flat all the way around there. Um, I had those bags in there originally with the press studs, but they tend to collapse and you're sort of ginning around in there. Now I've got my little, my little pen, pencil holders. Uh, what else have I got on the checklist? Um, torch, and there's an Allen key in there somewhere. Oh, the Velcro on the pens is really good just for, they'll stick anywhere. Um, and I've got an Allen key in there somewhere for refueling the aircraft for the fuel caps. Just a pin, pin stripe, and I've got a letter machine at home, so it just made it nice and sexy. Also, for the um, obviously, there's one on the other side for the passenger, and you can't go without a, um, a slot for your phone. So, nice and handy, doesn't rattle, um, you know, just build it to your custom make it to your own sizes. Oh, I covered this in because um, I'm an Air, RC Aero modeler, radio controlled. I um, I use that heat shrink film to cover it, or you could you could paint it, but you get sort of instant results with um, like solar film or monocoat, one of those things if you're familiar with that. So it makes for a good job. Um, obviously, underneath here, take the monocoat off and whack your glue on, so it's wood to wood. Um, and I think it's fantastic. Done a really good job. Surprised how many people picked up on it. Um, on that side, just a map pocket, my rag, and my refuel gear so works out really well okay guys that's my uh, jabberoo it's pretty windy and blowy outside you can probably hear the hangar doors so thanks for watching that one hope some of those tips might just help someone else out but that's just how i went about it um, don't forget tread your own path and make your own choices enjoy your flying thanks for watching